I thought it might be helpful if I tried to make some connections for you over the the entire unit that we've been talking about and just sort of summarize all of the counting rules that we've talked about so far um, and just try to help you decide which, which rule to use when. So we started with um, just counting in general, so counting questions. And of course we have some that are small enough that we can actually just count, so very simple questions. Um, after that, perhaps we have uh, longer questions, but perhaps they're still simple enough that we can just itemize all of the um, the options and go from there. So maybe we can't figure this out in our head, but perhaps we could use some sort of like an organized list or a chart or a table or perhaps a tree diagram. So all of those are just strategies to help us actually list out all of the different options and then be able to count in that way. Um, after that, we started using shortcuts for problems that got longer and more complex. So the first of those, um, we, we talked about the fundamental counting principle. Now there's a key question that helps us decide you know, when to switch over to some of those shortcuts. Right? So if tree diagrams happen to be uniform, then we would move into the next type of rule. Right? So I'm going to put these in green here. So we would ask the question, is the problem uniform? And if yes, okay, then we would keep going. And we can look at the fundamental counting principle as our next rule. All right, if no, if it's not uniform, then we would just continue to use a list, a chart, a, t a tree diagram, or something like that. There is no shortcut that we've talked about um, that could help us. Um, then, uh, if a problem is uniform and if we can use fundamental counting principle, now we've talked about several different types there uh, of questions. Um, some of them, some of the questions have had repetition involved. So like let's say we're choosing, uh, choosing numbers for a passcode and if we can use the same number more than once, so maybe we have passcodes like 5555, um, that's a situation that uses repetition versus a situation that doesn't. So if we were using um, numbers for a passcode but we couldn't repeat any, um, or if we were choosing people or something where each person can only be picked once, that would be what we, what we mean by no repetition. All right, so that's the next question to ask. Okay, we would ask, is there repetition? Repetition. I'm going to spell this wrong. Okay, and um, if, if yes, then we just keep on using the fundamental counting principle. There's no other shortcut. Um, but if no, then we go on. Right? And here we pause and ask the next question, um, is there order involved? Okay. And if no, if we don't care about the order, then we would use a combination And we had the, the calculator key for these and CR. Okay. Right, so that's a no. But if yes, if we do want to consider order, then that's a permutation. And then within permutations, we have, uh, at this point, three different rules for those. We have the one that's if we we're doing permutations of of all objects, okay. So like uh, we're choosing four out of four people and putting them in sort of an order. So we saw that we could just use n factorial uh, if we're only choosing some of all of the things that we have, but still looking at some sort of an order. Then we can do n p r, okay. and then we had another type of permutation where some of the things were alike. So it's not that we were repeating, but like, let's say we were doing, um, uh, we did an example with like the word moon and you want to make passwords out of that. All right. So it's, it's still no repetition in that. Like I'm not choosing this M twice, all right. Or I'm not choosing this O twice. However, since I have two O's that look the same, I need to account for that if I want to look at just the number of different permutations. Okay, so if, if we want um, 
permutations, one of these two rules. If we want different permutations, ones that actually appear to be different, then we had that other rule that was like n factorial divided by all of those, I think, I think they were k factorials, like k1 factorial, k2 factorial, and so forth, and we divided by a bunch of, of numbers down there. Okay, so that's everything we have for the rules so far, um, and you want to just keep asking yourself those three questions as you approach one of these counting problems. Is the problem uniform? Is there repetition? And is there order? All right, so look for clues, um, and we've, we've talked about those clues, so I won't list those again here, uh, but we could certainly discuss further um, outside of this video if you are uh, just struggling to see in a problem uh, whether or not it's uniform or has repetition or, or has order.